Hello everybody. Um, I said that I would report on my findings with Ma Shimon, or some know him as San Simon, and he's known by other names. Um, I was specifically told to use the term Ma Shimon for now, and so I've been lighting his candle, which is a, which is a yellow candle, and it says San Simon on it. Um, and I basically sat down in front of it and uh, with a cup of water and stated my intentions. That my intentions were not to ask for anything. My intentions were simply simply for an acquaintance, a um, like kind of like a getting to know him, what he's about. I can read things online, but I would much rather personally experience it. I would much rather see it with my own eyes and develop my own opinion. That's how I approach a lot of things. That's how I approach La Santa Muerte, and that's how I approach the rest of my spirituality. I, I, I take it, I, I develop my own truth, you know? And if it happens to align with other people's, then perfect. And that's validation for me. So, all right. So for the past few days, I've been lighting the candle and I told him just exactly this. I said, how important La Santísima Muerte is to me, that she is my number one, that she is my guide, that she is my queen, that she is first and foremost above everybody else because she's the one that's answered a lot of my my petitions. She's the one that's 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 actually made contact with me, you know? So of course she's gonna be my, my number one. So I told him all about me, and sorry, my cat's playing with something over there, all about my family and all about everything. And once again, I told him that I don't want anything from him. I just wanted to get to know him. I wanted to start this slow. I didn't want to rush into things like I normally do. And I didn't want him to be temporary. I wanted him to feel at home, to feel welcomed in my home and to stay here and to make himself comfy. <clears throat> so, I placed his candle, like I said, under the Santa Muerte altar because upon doing divination with her, it seemed like, well, doing divination with her cards, talking to her on her altar, it seemed like, yeah, welcome him in. Well, I'm excited, you know, bring him in. So I was like, oh, that's so cool. Okay, finally I get, like, permission to, to include someone else in this little pantheon of mine. And, um, so, um, I put his candle under her altar, and it's, it's like, as soon as I did that, um, his candle was, like, super, super high. I had a candle in a different room that was meant to be, like, an ancestral candle, but then the flame was always super, super low, so I never really, I, I just stopped lighting it. So we're moving stuff around here in the house, and I decided to bring that candle out and put it on, uh... Santa Muerte's uh, altar and that thing burns so bright and so high like I've never seen it burn before even when I first bought the candle it didn't even burn that high and I'm not one who's like big on oh how the candle burned too much I see it more as like energy in the room if the candle is burning like super super high there's a lot of energy in the room so not only was that old ancestral candle burning super high it was also her I, I have a white candle for her on her altar and then his candle all there in that same little area were whooshing they were like whoosh you know and I was like that's great because that that's a good burn that means that there's lots of of energy in this room hold on let me stop my cat from doing that okay so um I start to notice that I'm having issues with electronics, more specifically my printer and my router. I'm having trouble with getting my orders out because I print my labels at home when I'm when I'm shipping a package. I don't like to go to the post office to wait for them to to print labels for me. It's cheaper for me to do it here and it's faster. Okay? And so my printer wasn't connecting. I had to, after 
about five hours of trying to solve this printer issue, which I'm not an idiot, you know. Um, I just, I, I, I just got flustered because, it, to, to put it mildly, all of the, all of the connections were there, it just wouldn't connect, okay? So I couldn't get business done that day. So my orders were behind. So I ended up having to go buy a new printer. That printer wouldn't connect. Brand new printer. Met all of the other qualifications to be able to work just fine. Um, on printer end, on computer end, on router end, wirelessly printing, should have been working since the moment I opened that box. Nope. Just, you know, that's, that's how these things work. They seem like coincidence, but are they really? I don't know. Just all of these things happening over a period of three days. Mm -hmm. So I decided on a whim to just move his candle to a different location. I wouldn't keep it under La Santísima Muerte's altar. I would move it to the other side of the room. I thought that it was okay. I was like, she's okay with him. I don't understand why there would be a problem. First rule of Fight Club. You know, like, <laughs> make sure that everybody's okay with it. So because I didn't know him and I don't know him that well, I thought it was okay to place the candle under her altar. She might be okay with it, just like the ancestral thing. She's okay with it, they're not. So um, I went and I placed it elsewhere and it's like everything just fixed. I don't know how to describe it. It's just like the energy changed to a more neutral energy rather than a negative ion type of energy you know what I mean and um, things just felt better and last night like the day after I moved his candle and his cup of water I had a dream about him finally and I wasn't thinking about him before bed I wasn't nothing like that before bed as a matter of fact I wasn't thinking about any of the things that I dreamed last night before bed that doesn't usually happen well anyway I was basically dreaming about, I was at a fair, you know, I'm always dreaming about being at a fair and I'm always chasing my son around for some reason. I think it's mother's anxiety. Um, and in this case, he was very young. He was about four years old and um, it's dark, of course, outside. And I'm following these women who are in line to compete like in a gambling competition. And I noticed that a lot of them have this tattoo on their arm and it says Eshu, E-X-U, Eshu. And I was like, that's weird, okay. And I'm cool, you know, I'm cool with Eshu. I don't know Eshu personally, but I'm cool with the notion, you know, of, of Eshu and, and who Eshu is, what Eshu is. And I was like, okay, so they're into Eshu. <laughs> and um, they seemed like kind of like, toughened women you know like they're not gonna screw around you know what I mean um, and a little ghetto I'll be honest with you but regardless um, the one of them invited me to her house she's this she lives like in a in a big trailer and I remember her laying down for the night and for some reason, you know, like I, I feel an affinity for her. Like I've known her. She's like a friend or something. She kind of looks like a Jennifer. <laughs> and um, she has this big ass trailer. This trailer is like the size of a mansion. And she's like laying down with her family on, on her bed. And she's like, can you go and check all the windows and doors for me? And I was like, of course. I'd be happy to do that for you. And she's like, I trust you. And I was like, yeah, of course. No big deal. And so I'm checking all the windows and doors to make sure they're locked, you know, because her trailer's kind of worn down. And, of course, there goes my son, and he's messing with something, and he drank some milk that was rotten. He's like, I don't like this milk. And I was like, then don't drink it. And so uh, we're walking around. We go into their living room, and there's a bunch of women there, the ones with the, with the issue tattoos. And they have these two wooden dolls that are set up in a manner in which they're kind of like an altar but on the floor and one of them is a little devil statue 
and the one of them is like I remember it being an also wooden figure. They kind of look like Nutcrackers. Um, but the other one was a Pompagira, and uh, I don't exactly remember what she looked like, but it, it, it was there. A Pompagira was there. Well, my son broke one. He broke the bottom of the the issue statue, and it, it like the bottom of the base broke off. So I was trying to fix it. Like I said, I had a little like, oh, I know who issue is, you know, and I put it down. My son takes off again, and I'm going to go close the front screen door. And as I'm walking in, I'm walking into like a little um, sub living room. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a little porch area, but it's a living room and you have to like step down. There's a chair there to the right side of the screen door with a, a bunch of other living room furniture, but it's all dark. There's no lights, no nothing. It's all dark. So I go to close the screen door. I mean, I'm looking outside, my son ran out. So I go out, I chase him down. The neighbors chase him down, they bring him back. I go and I close the door and I am in the dark and I see this man sitting at the chair. He has his back to me. He's wearing a black hat and a black suit. And when you're dreaming, you don't have to say anything. Nothing has to be spoken to you for you to understand the message. Well, that message was like, I'm upset. Obviously, that's why I have my back towards you. But it was also very masculine, obviously, and very intimidating, very close to this realm, very close to us. And um, transitioning between like fatherly and grandfatherly. I'd say if this man was a person, he'd probably be in his mid 50s somewhere around there you know mustache is kind of salt and pepper I didn't see a mustache but I'm just just kind of describing to you mustache kind of salt and pepper he's got crow's feet you know but he's still young enough to like go out and do stuff you know so anyway he had his back to me but I could feel like this radiating energy like don't mess with me you better humble yourself real quick little girl you know, like, who the hell do you think you are? And I was just like, oh, I know who that is. I know who that is. And as intimidated as I was, borderline scared. I was, I wanted to make his acquaintance. I wanted to go s welcome myself. But you know what it's like when you can sense that somebody just does not want to talk to you. So I was just like... Like, I know who you are, but I have to go tend to my son. So I went into the living room, and, you know, they're messing around with the Eshu doll and stuff like that. And then that's when I woke up. So I immediately contacted the people that I was getting um, information from about Mashimon, which is what he wanted to be referred to as. And I was like, you know, blah, 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 this would happen. They're like... Yeah, it's best if you keep them separate at first until, until, you know, till they get to know each other. And it made me realize that I came off as rude when I introduced him and then placed him under the Santa Muerte altar. Like, I'm always telling people, like, keep them separate, keep them separate. But I figured since I had done divination on this and that she was cool with it, that he would be cool with it. But no, my dumbass didn't consider the other party. See, I make mistakes all the time and I'm happy to share them with you so that you don't make the same mistake. But anyway, um, I asked and I was like, do, does Eshu have anything to do with Mashimon? They're like, no, not at all. Um, complete, two different, completely separate continents is what my friend said. And I was like, okay. Well, that, and, and that's not gonna stop me, you know, like he was showing me this is what I'm capable of. This is how close I am to this realm. This is, this is what you wanted to see. I showed you. And now you know how to approach me. And how, now you know how serious I am. And now you know what to expect. I'm not just some, uh, you know, some little passing spirit that really doesn't care what you give them. No, I have my own following and I have my own... Um, 
basically my own cult. So you're not going to approach me in a manner in which is very passive. You're going to stand correct. And, you know, you're going to, you're going to learn your, your, your right way of approaching me. And I was like, got it. <laughs> I'm aware. Okay. Now, because I told him, I was like, I don't like to grovel. I don't think that I should grovel when I see these spirits like, I see all spirits like family. I was like, I approach them like family. I was like, and for a family, you don't grovel. So I made that clear, like, I won't grovel, but of course, you can stand in the presence of your, of your great grandparents or something like that and be humbled, but you're not groveling. You know, there's just something about groveling that chaps my ass, man. But anyway, that was my first experience. So, um, we'll see where to go from here. I, I made it clear that I understand that offering cigars is a big, big part of his, of his, um, following and as it is with Santa Muerte too. And, um, I, I mentioned to my friends, I was like, I just randomly got a cigar and a bottle of red wine the other day and I didn't know why. And but it's hers now. So we have to work something out. I have to work out because any time that I've given her offerings, she doesn't respond well to red wine and cigars. She likes cigarettes. So my friend said that he worked something out between them and now they're cool. So I'm going to try to see if that works on my end because that cigar is just sitting there and that red wine is just sitting there and I feel like it's got his name all over it. And once again, I don't want anything from him. I just want to make friends. That's it. Maybe that's wanting something in itself. Maybe that's worthy of those offerings, right? Because it is something that I want. So... I'm gonna to try to work that out today. If not, I'll just go get some more. Interesting so far. I don't intend on welcoming any more, just him. Not yet. This is a lot to handle already. So, um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks. If you have any, uh, you personally have any experiences with San Simon or Mashimon or his other names that he goes by that I need to remember. Um, leave them in the comments below. I really, really, really want to read your experiences. Really want to read your experiences. So, um, thanks for watching.